Okay, so it's January 20th, uh, 2022. And uh, let's see, I've got the um, combination rub rail and uh, tow rail things starting here. There's gonna be um, another layer of the cedar on top of that and then another layer on top of that. So, you know, it'll be about this high. Um, so it'll make a nice, um, nice rub rail and also help keep my feet on the deck if I'm wandering around up there. Um, so all these screws here are just temporarily going to be taking them out. Um, I just needed something to hold them in uh, while the epoxy is drying, so it's it, or curing. It's cured now, and uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna. I've been starting to work on the um, this part of the top sides, the upper top sides, uh, to get ready for painting it. And um, you might have noticed that um, I haven't sanded it completely smooth. There's actually a bit of uh, texture here, and that's quite deliberate. Um, so what I want to go for is something that looks sort of organic, um, biological. Um, so you can see, um, sort of trying to make it look like um, skin or something like that from a, from a creature. And uh, I love colors. I love having fun with um, things and doing di things differently. So, um, and I guess the closest um, inspirational sort of thing uh, that somebody might think of from this is the um, movie Avatar and the um, uh, planet Pandora and those um, say for example like the flying creatures that they get on and fly off on um, they've got they're just fantastic colors of uh, you know teals and blues and greens oranges yellows blacks all kinds of different um, patterns and it makes for a really cool um, kind of thing. So um, basically what I did here very deliberately on uh, both sides is um, to put the epoxy on um, very thickly, let it sag and run a little bit, and then run over it with a um, uh, spatula basically to, to kind of catch the drips and, and spread them out. And sometimes like a cross hatch pattern, um, this, you know, sort of random um, stuff to give it different look um, and different texture. And then how I'm going to um, make use of that is by doing this. So I've got a sample over here I've just been playing with from a color point of view. Um, so these colors in real life actually look a little bit more, look much more vibrant than they do um, in the video. Um, but essentially what I started with um, is I put down basically a blue uh, color first and then um, put in a dab of yellow and brush that into the blue to make this nice um, sort of greenish color over here. So I've got a, a range of colors from from a nice blue uh, color here um, to a medium greenish blue there to a more greenish uh, color over here. Um, so I did that first, coated that all, um, got that color sort of blended and looking interesting the way I wanted it. Then I put a couple of coats of clear over the top of that. Um, <clears throat> and then over the top of that, I put this um, purplish color, the same uh, color that I'm using on the, the bootstripe there. So I'm basically just picking that color up again um, and putting it over the top of this. And it just sort of pops nicely. So I can brush that on in a sort of a coarse sort of way, like I did over here to leave some of the green uh, behind it and the purplish kind of color over the top, um, which makes for something um, that looks interesting. Or the other thing I can do is what I did right here, which was just sand down through the purple, um, then a bit to expose the um, green or blue color underneath. Um, and by having a couple layers of clear uh, between them, I think I get more of a differentiation um, between those colors. And so that's why I put the couple layers of clear on there. Um, so how this works with the texture um, thing on the hull over here is that <clears throat> essentially if I do the same thing here, if I paint this whole thing blue, brush some yellow in here and there um, to make some variety of bluish, um, greenish colors um, on, on the boat, then um, after that um, add some of the purple to it. Um, I can add, you know, more purple, less purple. I'm thinking generally there'll be probably more of the purple color in the middle and then sort of tapering out more bluish green um, at the two ends. Um, but then once after I've applied that, you know, the, the blue 
and green colors, put a couple of layers of clear on, and then put the purple on the top. Then I can sand it. And then, and what will happen is, is, is where the higher spots are here, where you can see the sander um, caught this, um, the drip pattern and everything like that, those places will tend to show up blue, green, um, and the purple will tend to fill in the um, bits in, the, in between that, which will give it more, I think, of that um, pattern that I'm looking for, or that effect that I'm looking for. Um, lots of fun colors and sort of uh, interesting uh, way of them sort of popping out and everything. And then, of course, once I'm done with the whole thing, they'll put a few clear coats over the top of it just to protect it. But that's the idea. So we'll see how it all, how it all comes out.